question of what was removed from the rituals. So what we have is rituals passed down in Freemasonry. The names were swapped around the time of Athelstan. They were not just swapped, they were removed. So all the Nordic names which contained the meanings of the rituals were sucked out or extracted. Yeah. So the names of the gods in all the three first degrees then disappeared. And they tried to introduce King Solomon in Jerusalem instead. Mm -hmm. He was already known because he was mentioned as the wise king in uh, King uh, Alfred the Great's laws, which came just a few years before. So Alfred was kind of the introduction of the Christian symbol system coming in. Yeah. In, in his laws, which was uh, made about 890, mm -hmm. uh, he put up Moses and King Solomon as the great examples for the laws of the English society. So he introduced them, mm -hmm. and especially King Solomon with, with his wise uh, uh, judgment. Mm -hmm. And as an example to follow, and this was, I mean, this was probably picked up by his grandson Atlustan mm -hmm. when he transformed the Freemasonry. He took out Odin in Oskar mm -hmm. and Freya and Thor mm -hmm. and introduced King Solomon in Jerusalem instead. And okay. he made a story beside this and tried to convince this, but this is a story beside the, the rituals today, it's not a part of the actual, actual rituals. And, and you can kind of tell when something is, has been added to a ritual because it doesn't fit the sequence. Yeah. So we have these odd bits yeah. that don't quite fit in the Masonic rituals yeah. too. And, and that must confuse the hell out of people. Yeah, and especially in the, in the Scandinavian Freemasonry. It's, for instance, in the third degree, this is something that is read at the end of the meeting, and it has nothing to do with what is hap what's hap hap happened in the meeting. It's an, uh, it, completely incongruous. Yeah. So uh, I think that this was... Uh, they tried to have King, Sol King Solomon as the, say, S symbolic representative of wisdom. Of wisdom, yeah, in, yeah. in Freemasonry. Yeah. And, but this also had another meaning that they could carry on with the hidden rites mm -hmm. in the Christian area. And this wouldn't upset people. the. the people so much. Well, Athelstan was in the position of being sort of in the center between northern and southern England. So it it fell to him to try to unify everything with ideas. Yes. Um, so spreading a ritual that contains some essential Christian names with old Nordic patterns, it seems a pretty shrewd appeasement you know, kind of making everyone cotton on to the same ideas. It yeah. seems like a very good political maneuver. Yeah. There are three documents from uh, medieval England which describe this uh, right, th this uh, ritual change in York in about 927 or 26. Okay. And uh, one is called the Hallowell Manuscript and says that he transformed the, the and he corrected some mistakes that had been in the old rites. Well, that's a nice way to put it. Yeah, I think they used the word mistake. And um, so they corrected the rites and uh, they had the people from all over England that they should uh, establish this new uh, pattern pattern or or uh, yeah I wouldn't call it religion he would probably omit that but the system or mm -hmm. but um, it also said that um, 
he had afterwards the year after a meeting in Emot, Emot, mm -hmm. in um, in North in the Cumbria, mm -hmm. where he collected, according to the Anglo-Saxon chronicles, where he collected the um, uh, noblemen from England and Scotland and Wales and after this meeting and this ritual that was done mm -hmm. everyone here traveled back in peace and um, some kind of alliance was struck after this alliance yes and uh, probably I um, think that this was a um, meeting where the King of Scotland and perhaps Wales was initiated into Freemasonry. So the Freemasonry then functioned as a sort of confirmation of alliances. Yes, and uh, they, he used, uh, Atlasan used religion as an active part in united and taking control over the large Scandinavian settlement, the Dane law mm -hmm. that existed in England at his time. Okay. So he tried to combine the two people and have control over it. Mm -hmm. Before this meeting, he called himself King of England. And after the meeting, he called himself King of England and ruler over all Britain. So something had happened over there, and he could probably do that because he now felt that he had control of the Scottish and the Welsh, Welsh kings. Because they had an agreed, they had an agreed alliance based on some ritual they had passed through. Yeah. In uh, in Norway at that time, when uh, the mighty men uh, were baptized, this was a sign of submission to the king. And um, the kings, if they refused, the king took their farms and possession. Mm -hmm. And um, so he was threatened, the kings, no, the, the, the noblemen, mm -hmm. unless to, to be baptized. Right. And I think. So uh, that's an initiation. Baptism is an initiation. Yes, sure. And masonry also has levels of initiation. Yes. So that's our. That rings true, that it would have been used to confirm alliance. Mm, I think uh, this was uh, perhaps one of the reasons why he transformed the old Scandinavian or Norse rights mm -hmm. to use it as a political tool mm -hmm. in his uh, struggle for power in, uh, in England at that time. Okay. England and Great Britain. I wanted to just touch this idea we, we spoke, but we didn't finish the, the stream of thought earlier, and that was that um, the, the first rite of initiation was towards a female. Yeah. And so when Masons are doing this first rite, they don't know that the old meaning was actually coming under the authority of the goddess. Yeah, um, and that so that rebirth, after you were reborn, you came face to face with her. Yeah, it uh, wasn't a him. This this is um, this is probably the first degree is probably Freya's right in Scandinavia. Mm -hmm. She was the Scandinavian name of the great mother goddess that we have all over Europe with the uh, roots thousand and thousand years back mm -hmm. and you find that also in Greece as uh, Demeter and Kuria and you find it in uh, in Mesopotamia Babylonia mm -hmm. uh, as where the candidate goes under the under the ground and is taken back again and the Saxo story with the Freya Mm -hmm. He tells how King Hadding sat in the hall one day and Freya came up near the fireplace. She led him underground 
to a path where they saw armies fighting and then to the Mur, the wall. And this is a similar thing. Mm -hmm. She cut the head of a cock mm -hmm. that she brought yeah. with her yeah. and threw it over the wall. And so Freya mm -hmm. takes the candidate to the underground as Kore and the letter mm -hmm. in uh, Greece and mm -hmm. in, in the old Babylon times. And um, the um, Odin's the Odin's right is now the second degree in Freemasonry and Thor's right is the third degree in Freemasonry. And you have been able to find plenty of evidence to support that. We find that in in archaeological findings all over Scandinavia. We mm -hmm. find it in museums in Scandinavia, in the old literature. Mm -hmm. Everything is very, very similar to Freemasonry. It must be a Germanic rite, mm -hmm. and most probably from the Norse time. Source. 